Welcome to StartupRad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Welcome, everybody, to This Month in German Startups, May 2020. If you're new to our podcasts, we are wrapping up the, the startup news of the German-speaking area in a monthly recording from Frankfurt and New York. Have a look at our website, www.startupradio.io or www.startup.radio, and you'll find the links to our recordings and the articles we are quoting from there. Some of the sources are in English, some are in German. You can reach out to us. There's an audience survey with Google Forms and, of course, directly to the hosts. Remember to like and subscribe here on YouTube or wherever you're listening to the audio podcast. With a bit of luck, you will be the 195,000th subscriber to our podcast. It's incredible. 195,000 subscribers. And of course, you can consider to support us on Patreon, uh, patreon.com forward slash startup radio. Our enabler, this recording was made possible by Hessen Trade and Invest. Learn more about our able dub 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 invest minus in minus hessen.com. Together with them, we are running a podcast. You'll find all the links in the show notes where you can subscribe. And now I would like to welcome Chris finally, who's here again in our third recording during times of Corona. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Hey, uh, still kind of on lockdown here in New York, but uh, it's not brutally enforced. So it's called stay at home order and mostly people do, but the parks are tempting. So no, all great. And I get to start this month's edition of the podcast with the housekeeping, which usually is like the house bragging. And it is the same uh, this time around because um, we made it into Russia's Apple tech podcast charts up to number 121. And in the People's Republic of China, Apple tech podcast charts into the top 500 there, which now gets our total up to 30 countries miraculously. So um, as Joe said once again, but I mean, I just need to reinforce this. We are now also on Patreon. If you like our podcast, there's different ways to contribute. Um, obviously, you want your money under www.patreon.com slash startup radio. Um, also, we published some new cool interviews where we wanted to highlight, especially this month's interview with IDA, where we talked to the CEO and co-founder Hamedo Ayadi of Intelligence Data Analytics. That's what IDA stands for. At the start of the coronavirus outbreak, 70% of their employees work related to aviation, which then was completely stopped by one phone call. And he told us the story how they changed the strategy incredibly fast in order to survive. And um, you can find that under startuprate.io and um, in the interview section there. Talking about sections, coronavirus and COVID-19, still a section here. German government approves the Corona Aid package for startups. A 2 billion fund will add to private funding from the package. 70% of each investment will be public and 30% private. This is called Corona Matching Facilität. The package was put together quite fast since the first announcement has been in mid April. That's really speedy for German government. There'll be another pillar called Startup Schutzschild, Startup Shield, which will assist the instruments of Germany's 16 states for startups who have no backing by investors yet. Related, we found news about two of the measures of single states. Bavaria LFA sets up a new loan program for small and very small enterprises by Munich Startups and Hamburg. They call their program Inno Startup. Hamburg startups, and there'll be more information in the hub section. Corona cases in Amazon Logistics Center in Wiesen, Germany. Verdi, the union demands to close the location. And we have news, German unicorns like Dreamlines, Flixbus, Get Your Guide, Home Like, Home To Go, 
Omeo Tourlane and Trivago write open letter to Google to get 75 million advertisement money back. The letter is also signed by the head of the German Startup Association. We have a COVID-19 survey by slash 50% of startups have six months to live and other insights from our COVID survey is the title highlights startups will need to raise funds at any costs. The importance of networks is at new high. Recruitment at a halt, but existing staff is largely kept on. Remote work is taking a toll. I, I quote, working from home has put a strain on startup employees. What a surprise, like everybody else. And as sale drops, new winners are emerging. They say B2C startups are doing better than those selling B2B and pure D2C companies have actually experienced a net increase in sale. There was a lot of bad news. Chris, you got something better, I heard. I got some good news related to COVID. So, for example, came a Vision is an AI startup. <coughs> so, that's some thank you. Now I'm better. KML Vision, an AI startup from Graz, Austria, and they claim that their software could recognize COVID-19 on x-ray pictures. Um, we have a link about that. Um, it's quite interesting. And then we have the German online grocery store Food.de, who sees a big impact of COVID-19 on its business. Their sign-up increased 25-fold, they said. And we have a veteran of startup culture, Mark Cuban, who in a podcast said why coming out of the pandemic will be the best time in the history of mankind to start a business. Um, and that actually is also backed by science because we often see that in times of crisis and even economic downturn, the number of founders or the number of startups founded um, actually increases. And Mark Cuban also was a guest on the show of our friends here in New York. It's actually run by a, a German friend of mine, Felix Seltner, um, at Remote Daily, which is a talk format building uh, a business community about actual like sustainable business community, I would probably say. Um, so it's a very kind community via daily Zoom calls. So you can check that out if you just Google Remote Daily. And there, Mark Cuban also spoke about leadership in times of the crisis. And we have the YouTube link to that also in our show notes. And that's it with the good news about COVID. Let's move on to uh, startup news in general. Ecosystem, German venture capital barometer sets a new record low due to coronavirus. All indicators in the red. The business climate index for the German VC scene is calculated by German VC and PE Association BR Cup and KFW, the German government backed development bank. The quoted specialist by KFW finds it likely the VC investors will focus on their portfolio and not make significant new investments. VCs in Germany only finance 8% of startups co-funded by women, that is 70% of their investment, another analysis found. And we found a very interesting picture, graphics. Startups, banking in Germany. According to a recent analysis, approximately 5% of startups in Germany have a bank account with Neobank Penta. The younger the startup, the more likely they are to bank with a challenger bank. The share of established players with newly founded startups is shrinking fast, especially the share of Deutsche Bank. Commerz, uh, Commerzbank, on the other hand, is holding up well. From... The established player, the German thrift organizations, Sparkassen, are the leaders in startup banking, but they are together 385 institutions. Also, Volksbanken, the cooperative banks, are doing pretty well. The Volksbanken and Sparkassen are usually the only banks of which you'll find branches outside of larger cities. Puh. That was stressful. Time to relax. More than 50 companies now have permits to trade in medical cannabis in Germany. The crowding leads to a decline in revenues, writes a startup blog from six digit a month to five digit a month. There is related cannabis news from Germany. Deutsche Startups has a list of 13 startups headquartered in Germany working in the market. They only forgot the Frankfurt-based Kansativa. The startup was the reason for a partial lockdown of the city of Frankfurt as they started out because the super secure warehouse gave a false alarm. It appears that some type of spider tripped over... Um, 
as the QT alarm or something. This brings us to the hubs section. This time we show a bit more of the less known places where still interesting startups exist. As you know, we like to highlight that here, not on this section, the order of the articles and hubs is in order of we found them, no other particular order. That said, of course, we start up with Frankfurt and the rhine main area. The app Alaya supports communications in the hospital and takes away some of the burden of the medical personnel. There is a webinar for the STEP program of the German-American Chamber of Commerce in New York City, which enables German startup to make, to make a first step to New York, which will take, of course, place remotely on June 30th. 1400 to 1500 CTU can register here and startups from Hessen can apply for 1,500 euros funding for such a trip. An Ariel Bank, Wiesbaden based bank, specializes in property financing. They are wanting to sell parts of their IT subsidiary after pressure by a hedge fund investor. Also from the Rhine Main area, there is still business going on during Corona in Mainz, especially. Mainz based Mailtastic, a GDPR conform marketing platform, completes exit, as they say, seven digits to New York based Cognizant. Munich, Amai, seven digital, seven digit venture capital investment for Arium, which helps to minimize errors in manufacturing process, reports Munich startups and Wikimedia Germany starts an accelerator program called Unlock in Munich. All startups working towards an open knowledge society can apply. There is to the very north Hamburg. Hamburg based Yoga Easy is booming like Netflix Rhyme. Hamburg startups from what we understand the principle is uh, pretty easy and similar um, it's basically um, streaming yoga courses and as we promised before Hamburger Corona Soforthilfe HCS is seen as a great success of the program 25 million are earmarked for startups HCS Inno which already approved 2.3 million euros says the uh writes the blog hamburg startups chris you want to take the less known, known places uh yes i actually do so uh we for example go to hanover which is not far from where i lived in germany before i moved to the us and um a company from hanover called frank box frank with a q q um, is part of an article at Deutsche Startups. Uh, Frank Box is a software uh, in order to manage complaints and uh, feedback. Um, so it's some good news that there are still startups being founded uh, during Corona, or at least getting some attention and money. Then we move on to the southern part of Germany, uh, Göppingen, which is close to Stuttgart in the car region. And Göppingen is also actually the place where the first ever article that I uh, was paid for was published in the local newspaper there. And it was about how a public pool gets through winter. So, <laughs> and I still think it's a great idea for an article. Anyway, Permira uh, sells team viewer shares worth 1.1 billion. So we all know the Zoom story, how Zoom profited from Corona, but also team viewer is one of those like hidden champions, I would say. And also team viewer is such an excellent software to um, have healthy relationships with your parents because it allows for much better IT support at your parents' computer because you can remote control their computers and actually do all the little things that sometimes become a bit confusing. Interruption, this this podcast is not sponsored by TeamViewer. <laughs> No, but it's no, but it's like I'm just a hundred percent confident about TeamViewer. It's such a good product, and yeah, and again, the whole family Farnbach is on board with this opinion. My mother loves it too. So, Permira sells TeamViewer shares worth 1.1 billion. Writes Reuters, the PE investor bought the German startup outright and listed them later at the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. Now they sold approximately 20 percent of their stake. Moving on to Düsseldorf with. Uh, which has a surprisingly huge Japanese community for a German city. And in Düsseldorf, we have Dr. Sam, which is a digital veterinarian. Um, and Dr. Sam raised a seven-digit amount of venture capital. More about that in the show notes. 
Zurich in Switzerland, where the Swiss fintech numbers without the E, access 50% of their workforce after venture capital financing, a venture capital financing round fell through, even as they claim they had signed contracts from investors they did not want to proceed. Numbers is backed by investors like former CEO of Deutsche Bank, Josef Ackermann, which you might remember from his victory sign picture. Um, Potsdam, close to Berlin, their German startup Flightright, which is one of those startups that gets you compensation um, in case your flight was delayed. Um, sues Lufthansa due to open refunds. So adding on uh, onto the pile of stress that Lufthansa faces right now, just yesterday there was the news that the German government will actually become a major shareholder in what is the biggest German airline. And Nuremberg in uh, a cute little town in Bavaria, not so little, but I mean little-ish, uh, there was a successful IPO despite COVID-19 because Nuremberg-based database company Exasol list, lists at the Frankfurt Stock Exchange and jumps 50% during the first trading. And that's the end of the hubs and the cities. Which lets me move on to companies. We have the EIT Digital Challenge, which is looking for fast growing European deep tech companies. And that challenge is handing out 350,000 euros in prices. And N26, we've spoken about them before. I used to be even a client of that uh, fin startup or finance startup. Um, and it's actually a Berlin based unicorn, even. Um, they felt the first impact of lower transactions in March. They said in April they sent 150 employees in government backed Kurzarbeit, which is um, a German way of um, letting people work less but getting some kind of compensation from the government. Um, those 150 employees are about 10% of their global workforce. And now they also raised 100 million US dollars with a steady valuation of 3.5 billion US dollars. Um, which is news that comes from the Vienna and Austria based blog der Brutkasten.at, um, which are usually very good and reliable since both remaining founders are natives of Vienna, Valentin Stauf and Maximilian Tayental, and they move with N26 from there to Berlin. Um, that blog also further speculates that the increase of their Series D, which is now $570 million, um, one and a half years after the initial Series D round, suggests a short-term need of money. Related to that, uh, there's also a Pitchbook article saying that N26 extends Series D to $570 million. The time of Corona appears to be also a time for restart. Um, we have two news from Berlin related to that. Number one is one of the founders of Berlin-based to-do list darling Wunderlist announces a new productivity app called ta -da -da -da, Superlist. The SoundCloud founders start a new mobility startup. Porsche invests in Berlin-based blockchain startup to develop a platform for, he for vehicle management. And we found the news, maybe the only ones re uh, more or less related to Rocket Internet, Jumaya, started by Berlin-based Rocket Internet, the e-commerce startup that fell from grace, writes BBC Africa. They write a year after its much-heralded debut on the New York Stock Exchange e-commerce startup, Jumaya has shut down in three African states, struggled to turn a profit and got dumped by its original owners. Last but not least, Berlin-based B2B food group with, with brands like Cater Wings, Lemon Cat, Mon Banquet, and order in retreats from the German home market as a consequence of COVID-19 to focus on other markets. Only thing left for us is, of course, we collected a lot of more in-depth articles, something that didn't make it in the news. That, of course, is something you can read at Stay Ahead of the Curve, which you found here, which you'll found here down on the show notes. Um, of course, you can always um, click on the link there and that will lead you to our blog. Question? 
that was pretty fast. Once again, approximately 20 minutes. It was such a pleasure having you here. Stay safe. Be safe in New York and looking forward to make the startup news of June together with you. As opposed to what we announced, there'll be June news just for the very simple reason that I cannot travel and I'll be at home as well as Chris. So we decided, okay, let's do June news, right? Might as well. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye guys. Stay safe. That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, sharing is caring.